morning, my name's Alex Campbell. My name's Aaron Wright. And you're watching Examining the Expanse. This episode is kind of building on the escalation of the Rossinante as crew. A, as if the whole fucking show isn't just a constant escalation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it escalates to new heights. And from what Jasper's saying about the books, it continues to escalate to new heights. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what you want, right? Yeah. You want constant escalation. If you've got some, if you if you play it smart in your story, mm. you, you constantly leave yourself somewhere to go. Yeah, you don't do the Neo thing at the end of the Matrix, it's where tough, he's yeah. Superman at the end of the first film. So what do we do for the second film? I don't know. Maybe he's still <laughs> Superman. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, season four ends with book five. So after that, we still have five, six, seven, eight, three books. And then there's one book to come out this year, I think. So is that, is that, is that last book the end of the whole thing? Yes, that'll be it. Nice. This night. So they might... They might be able to actually stick the landing. <laughs> Hopefully. Could you imagine if the show was Sticks the landing? Of sticking the landing? With what, eight seasons? Yeah. Fuck. That'd no, be amazing. No, no. Or, or like seven seasons <laughs> in a movie or something. Yeah, yeah it's, no. it's unprecedented. I, it would be... It would, well, it's the sort of thing that you just... Okay, well now I can binge watch that every year or two. Yeah, like, yeah. Like this is one of the greatest pieces of media <laughs> ever to come about. Like The Sopranos, like Breaking Bad. Okay. Stargate, <laughs> Next Gen, now we've got this new modern sci-fi series, but it could also do the Game of Thrones thing. But I don't think so, because that fell apart because they didn't have the books. That's These right. people have the books. They have the books, yeah. Just follow the books. Yeah, yeah. And the writers should come through with the final book, because they've, they've written a book every year for the past, like, Well, so, I years. mean, all the, all the next books, plus the one that hasn't been written, are all apparently pretty good, right? They're all the same, like, quality? Yeah. Yeah, so you just gotta... Jasper. Yeah, so you just... So, so you just gotta, you just gotta follow the, you, you just gotta follow the same path that you've been going. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's you like, have the story just converted into a television show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So hopefully, and they're getting better. They're getting better. Yeah, I yeah, imagine. Yeah, yeah. I imagine they're getting better at mm. converting it into a good show. Yeah. yeah so. It's gonna be delayed a bit because of the old coronavirus. They were able to finish filming season five. Okay. But, you know, then all the special effects artists and all the, like, computer animators and all those guys. They yeah. haven't been working when they're supposed to be working. Yeah, that's correct. The lazy bastards have taken this time during this epidemic off when they should have been working on The Expanse. You should be, you should send them an angry email. <laughs> Dear Expanse crew, this mild delay to season five due to this global epidemic is not acceptable. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, so... At this point in the narrative, the Rossinante crew are after the proto molecule. Yeah. They, they've seen the horrors at our, our station, they're like, fuck, this is hectic, we need to destroy it. Eventually, it just gets out of hand and it just it, it opens yeah, a portal yeah, and yeah. it's like, we're, <laughs> we're not controlling it, it's free. But at this point in time, they think they can stop it. So they come across this station which has people from our station. Jesus, Steve! <laughs> people responsible for our station on it. And basically it's just like an extraction episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. get some badass action sequences mm. which are like executed immensely well. Well, I mean I watched this I watched this episode like a week or two ago. Yeah. I've been binge watching it again. Yeah. And you know, like it's the tension, the tension in the whole execution yeah. of the thing, it's just fucking, it just boggles the mind. Yeah. It's excellent, it's excellent. Yeah. yeah. The music is somewhat generic, but it's still able to... Yeah, it's minimalistic, sort of, um, like, tribally drum sort of thing. It's... it's some, like, strings, some, yeah. like, dramatic strings. It's reminiscent of, um, of, uh, uh, what's the, with the Cylons? That oh, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, it's reminiscent yeah, yeah. of, yeah, and, uh, I think I, um, spoke about that ages ago, but yeah. it's very, uh, a lot of the sort of choreography of the space and stuff and the music and everything mm. is reminiscent of, of Battlestar Galactica, but mm. obviously executed, you know, about a million times better. Yeah. Mm. But 
But yeah, it's not like a big epic score like Ernie and Marconi's score and The Good, Bad and the Ugly or John Williams in No, oh yeah, you don't need it to be, right? Well, you don't want, you don't need a, you don't need a super epic score. Yeah. It's a fucking TV show. Have you ever watched the um, end coronation of the first Star Wars without the score? It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually, I, I have where they, um, where they like, they put, they record sounds yeah, of like, people like scuffling their little feet and, and, co and yeah, coughing yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's so yeah. awkward. And, and even that end battle in the first Star Wars, it's, it's all the score. It's all driven yeah, by that big, epic, crazy score. Yeah. And then you've got a little fucking model. Which shots. is fine, which is fine. That's, but that, that's a different type you of You can media. do that. You can yeah. do that. Of course you can do that. Right? Mm. That's fine. It's just, you know, you, you need a really great score for that. Uh, if the score wasn't here, it probably wouldn't matter that much. Obviously, yeah. it adds an extra layer to it. Yeah, I it mean, if it had that epic score on top of it, you'd have to change it. But the way it is, it works perfectly. Yeah. The music ramps up the tension, the editing and pacing is amazing, mm -hmm. the space battle, all the CGI ship elements look great. Oh, yeah. When we cut back into the Rossinante, it's red lit at the beginning, and then when they go into battle mode, it's blue lit, and it just looks beautiful. Well, the, 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 and that was in the behind the scenes thing that we watched. Right? Yeah, they, they, really. they've got the well established visual and sound cues for everything. And you mm. know, it all it all adds texture and depth to the. You know, I was watching it. There was just you know, it was like um, approaching the end of the the extraction sequence. Um, yeah. They're just they're approaching. It was an outside shot of the station, and they're approaching the station. And I just the the thought passed my mind. It's like it's amazing how believable it is. Yeah, yeah, it really um, is. <laughs> like, you know, it's just it's so. I'm watching. It, I'm going, okay, uh, it's a space station, and they're fucking. They're in the thing and they're actually doing it or whatever, right? Mm. It's just you're watching it and you're totally immersed in what's going on. Yeah, I um, watched an interview with the authors and they were saying like people keep on keep on calling this high high concept sci-fi because gravity exists yeah. and it functions as gravity. But they were like, really, we did like Wikipedia level research yeah, yeah, yeah. on like how does gravity work? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, within the battle, when you see the Rossinante spinning around and they're, they're all in their couches and the G's they're feeling, it adds so much to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. you come back to Star Trek and the Enterprise is doing no manoeuvres and the, the bridge crew are just standing there. Well, That's it, a different show, well, but, but what I'm saying is that gravity adds so much to all of this. Well, they, they'd say it would be inertial dampeners or whatever. Yeah, yeah, line, sorry. That's right. Try it. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, again, yeah, it's like um, it's like in the last one that you and I did when we discussed the the way that the um, the the way that they interact with gravity mm. on a personal level uh, as yeah. as to the show. Yeah. yeah. Well, the G's, the G, the G forces actually play a huge part in the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, what is the expected G forces mm. of whatever we're doing now? Yeah. Not just the action sequences, but like the development of this culture. Yeah. How does zero G change the development of this culture if they are born raised in it. Well, their bone density is way smaller, they're way taller, all this crazy well, well, shit. What's the limit of what we can do as far as our spaceships and yeah. all that sort of yeah. stuff, you know? And it, yeah, it, it's world building on such a uh, an in-depth level. It's not just how does the environment affect this battle, it's how does the environment affect every layer <laughs> of this world, yeah. culturally, economically, politically, action-wise. The um, authors, right, they were one of the guys, because it's two authors, but they have one pen name, because I don't know, it's okay. easier. Um, it was going to be a, I'm not a game guy, what is World of Warcraft? An M a MMO? MMO, yeah. yeah. Massive multiplayer. Uh, MMO RPG, so massive multiplayer online RPG. Role yeah. Game, yeah, they were going to make um, a sci-fi one to rival that. Yeah. So that's why you developed the three factions and all of that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, and basically what ended up happening, how he explained it, which is hilarious, was one of the guys in the production turned out to be crazy. <laughs> so they all just backed away from the production. They're like, nope. <laughs> and then yeah, you had this thick ass fucking binder of world building. Oh, that's so yeah, cool. Yeah, so before anything was written, before the prologue. Oh, so, was so written, they were gonna do a game before they wrote books for it. Yeah, yeah. So this was one of the one of the authors. Yeah. So with these other people that are developing this game and he just makes this thick ass book of world building and then the project falls apart because someone's fucking crazy. <laughs> and then the other author comes over and he's like, 
what is this? It's like, well, this is my thick art book of well buildings. Like, well, we should write a novel. That's so great. Yes. What a fucking yeah, yeah. So before the prologue, before chapter one, we have all this in-depth years of research into how the world functions. Well, that shows. It shows, right? Absolutely. And, that, and if you're gonna do something like that, uh, well, from what I understand of the novel writing process, that's you know, yeah, that's something that if you do that, it adds a lot yeah. to your art. Uh, yeah, well, same with Tolkien. Right? Yeah, well, that's Tolkin yeah, yeah. spent a decade writing the Lord of the Rings, but before that, there's all this other stuff of the world. He yeah. was really more fascinated in the languages and the world rather than the narrative. Yeah, which you know, narrative came second for Tolkien. Which, yeah, they throw a ring in some volcano, whatever. <laughs> but but you know, ultimately, ultimately, yeah, then you write the narrative mm. to fit the, to fit and the it world. feels real because. The world is thought out. And well, you got functions. rules. You got rules like yeah, consequences, yeah, yeah, actions, yeah, yeah. and reactions, mm. and da 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 da. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense from like a pipeline perspective. Yeah. You know, well, what do you do to to do this other thing? Right? Yeah. What's the priorities in in writing something? You know? Yeah. And yeah, and you can feel that the start of listening to the audio books. I'm like seven hours into the first one. Mm. Yeah, you can hear that in the books. You can see that in the show. The world is there from the beginning. Mm. It's thought out, it's sensical, and it's, yeah, so in-depth, and makes it feel real. Well, it's Everything. like, it's like the, um, the language, right? I know we talked about the Belta language. Well, yeah. so I was reading up on it, and yeah, it's, um, so Creole, right? Yeah. Creole, so you've got, like, Pigeon, mm. and then you've got Creole, and they're basically, um, two, like, um, Pigeon is the sort of emergent, the beginning emergence of where people start mm. to, like, replace words or or contract words, right? Yeah. But it's not like an established thing mm. in a language, so it's kind of like slang, yeah. right? But Creole is when uh, a language, when that goes a step further, and you've got multi-generations or whatever that start to uh, uh, adopt the sort of multi-languages that start to merge together yeah. in, a, in a coherent and consistent way, mm. right? And so this is Belta Creole. Yeah, yeah. It's the language, right? And it's a mix of like Slavic and German and Japanese and Russian. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, they've just gotten. Because the Belters are just like a mongrel species of <laughs> yeah. all nationalities just jammed into these space stations that have grown up together. Well, I love it because you listen to, to them talking and it's like, oh, well, they'll they'll replace like a plural yeah, with yeah, a singular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. like, and it's just, it's, yeah, it's fucking great. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Your lodge is going to be right around that corner, all right? So, But I can set you up and get you transport if you want to go somewhere else. So don't be shy. Hell, I can even get you a job if that's what you I don't want to bunker a job. I want to fight the inners who kill my home. Yeah, it is great. We get some great character moments in the opening of this episode too with um, Alex and Amos at a mm. bar mm. and then with Holden and Naomi. Mm -hmm. So my first watch through, even at this point, I wasn't that familiar with the characters yeah. or like getting to know, I was still getting to know them and still building on that like family mentality by the end they become this like family that's been yeah, family, yeah. fucking hell and back four <laughs> times over <laughs> but still they're, they're, they're building up their relationships and they're, they're just trying to show the audience all these little character traits well, well you know well, what are their motivations what are their values mm. what do they care you know how do they react to certain situations mm. and it's funny because you know it's so well done that eventually you learn to to, to know what a character will do in a certain yeah, situation yeah. how they'll interact with each other yeah this character will think this about this situation the other one will think this and they'll interact off of each other you know a conflict will come with uh you know blah 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 yeah and how they feel and versus yeah. how they feel and yeah and the show will quickly be like well don't worry about that <laughs> let's do the next season <laughs> series of events <laughs> Uh, mm. So yeah, we get all these great action sequences getting onto this space station. They get onto the space station and there's this great like surrealistic sci-fi imagery of all these scientists plugged into this fucking yeah. machine. They're all tapping away, doing their fucking thing. Unresponsive in the trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, they get up and they all freak out, and the belt is just, just up. Well, that's what you do, right? Into them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super on edge, yeah, right? And, they, yeah. and, you know, they weren't told. Nobody yeah. said anything mm. about, you know, 
don't shoot them. Yeah, yeah. It, so. I mean, the belters. <laughs> yeah, fucking <laughs> the scum. Yeah, the yeah, 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 scum. yeah, yeah, yeah. These people start freaking out. And yeah, in retrospect, it's like, well, they didn't have weapons and you no. just unload on them, but you know. <laughs> For the time, it seemed reasonable. I love um, the juxtaposition of like our neo noir detective too, yeah. jammed in with all these fucking soldiers, oh. and he's so out of his element and just like, oh well, well, fuck. When he's in that that whole sequence where he's in the fucking the beer can, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 breaching pod, mm. it's just so great. Well, so he meets up with fucking that little punk kid, the, the little punk, which he is. That is a great like they he. Yeah. Through the whole thing. He, he goes on this whole fucking arc <laughs> <and> journey. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even fucking know what his bloody name I is. I don't know what his name is. But he's, it's great, and yeah, yeah, he's like interacting with them, and he's uh, and he's uh, he betrays obviously that he's not a spacefaring person, and, and it's building tension, suspense for the events. It's not just like this is some lackluster. I'm gonna do it's like no, this is important, this is tension filled, this is dangerous. Yeah. Look what we're doing. Miller's like, fuck, I don't wanna be here. Yeah, I regret like, everything. He's like shaking and he's fucking yeah. nervous and he's like, he asks the, the like the first question or whatever. They all laugh at him. Yeah, yeah they all laugh at him. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of belt that are you? <laughs> Vomiting because he doesn't like space travel. They just hate space. <laughs> <laughs> And then yeah, it's it's great at uh, building emotional attachment to the events that are happening too. When Miller is in one of the pods, mm -hmm. and I love how this show it just clearly and concisely it's like, all right, we need to destroy the cannon before it destroys the breaching pods, and it's like, and then they do it. It's like, okay, that's great. It's just clear and simple and precise. Well, ticking, ticking clock. Right? Yeah, ticking yeah. Clock. And you're emotionally involved because Miller's in one of the pods and you got fucking Amos bouncing around as a ship. There's so much fucking All going these elements on, going yeah. on to just make you immersed completely. It's mm. not like some blase fucking show where... I don't want a bag next generation, but it's not like they're trying. Next generation's good for what it is. There's no tension. No. But that's because it's a different type that, of show. Yeah, it's a different thing. This is something else. This is full immersive intense atmosphere, everything just peaking and spiking in suspense. Yeah, it's, it's excellent. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and basically at the end they come to one of the scientists and we get some great exposition into the motivations of Julie Mao's dad. Yeah. I don't know his name. Old Man Mao. Um, uh, Jules. Jules. Yeah. 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 There you go. Which is a French name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, well, I guess like part of this is all the cultures of just. Yeah, yeah, all the cultures. Mm. Well, well, so you you see French names with um with the various colonies and stuff that came. Yeah, like French like, Canada and whatnot. Yeah, like. French Canada. You'll see. You yeah, know, and so and you can so you can have like Asian ethnicity people with French names and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's all. And yeah, even like biologically, like in the books, Naomi is explained as like this mix of African and Russian and German yeah. and Norwegian and that we've all just, yeah, just bred in with each well, other well, and that's, cultures. That's and what's going to happen. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Globalization. Mm -hmm. It's not like when you jump on a ship and it takes you fucking eight years to get to Ireland and you have a funeral before you leave yeah. <laughs> because you're never going to come back to the home world. It's like, yeah, no, we're all everywhere now. Hmm. So yeah, they come across this scientist and he gives some great exposition into what old man Mao actually wants and yeah, he's basically just ex experimenting with the human race and he just wants to see the, the pinnacle of what this extraterrestrial device could do if it merges with humans. He says something about being like the void of space without space suits. Yeah, yeah so, so artificial evolution, that's, that's a, um, we've seen that. Well, actually, we saw that in Stargate, right? They were doing yeah, uh, yeah, who yeah. was doing that? Was it Anubis? Yeah, a so couple of the system lords were doing yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah they were. Oh, um, not Nefreti. Nefreti? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Hmm. She put the bomb in that little girl and whatnot. <laughs> That's a great fucking storyline. That's so brutal too. I just uh, just rewatched the first five seasons of Stargate. Did you? Yeah, Did and you? there are some great just like standalone like forty minutes of like an amazing sci-fi concept that comes and goes, has a beginning, middle, and end. And, 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 and they flesh out. They flesh out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, so Stargate tangent now. What about the fucking <laughs> the um the the episode 
where with the um the crazy like uh the the crazy uh evil scientist lady mm. right that uh the gas the entire population of the planet yeah, and yeah, make yeah. them more young but yeah, they all forgot yeah yeah right, yeah, right? yeah. And, and, then, and they, they release her the first time and then they come back and they've got like plaque on their brains mm. which is similar to like Alzheimer's yeah. so they remove the plaque mm. from the brain and she figures out who she is then you get the like, moral conundrum of like if she doesn't remember who she is or what she done is she still evil yeah if Hitler has amnesia <laughs> should he be held accountable for the holocaust yeah, yeah, yeah. well <laughs> maybe <laughs> I think did they end up letting her go yeah 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 so they they, they wiped her memory again and let it that's back. right yeah, yeah, yeah. which is another back. moral thing it's like is this ethical to yeah. delete someone's memory yeah yeah, yeah. Totally, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get all those great moments between Bergen, Jackson, and O'Neill, the, the two polar ops. It's kind of how Miller and Holden are. And yes, the, yes. Yeah, they play off each other really well. You got Miller, who was like the anti-hero, <laughs> who's jaded and cynical and burnt and divorced and alcoholic. Then you got Holden, who's like the twenty-year-old like hero who wants to save the but world but, and well, do good. But he's he's the non-hero, right? He's well, a, well, he no, becomes the non-hero. No, no. What is it? Not the non-hero. It's the um the 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 the, the non voluntary hero. There's this term yeah, for it, right? Okay. Yeah, thrust into it mm. and sort of yeah, I'm like like Aragon. Yeah, yeah. He like, doesn't want to be the king. Yeah, but yeah. based purely on circa, based on how the circumstances of which he is in, how it plays off his values. Yeah. Thrusts him into being the then hero. Then he's forced to do all this. Yeah, stuff. forced to act based on what his principles and values are, yeah, which, yeah, we yeah. which we learn to understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so at the end of this episode, Miller, they get to a point where Fred Johnson, who was, you know, this, he's set up as this horrible, horrible butcher of this military thing. But, but he's they, not, he's super this, complicated. Yeah, in this episode, you're like, it's, it's not that simple. No. He didn't have all the facts. So yeah, basically it gets to the point where the scientists and Fred Johnson are like, okay, we can make a deal. We're not going to fucking just kill you. You need to teach us about the proto molecule and we'll give you a free pass. It's like the, the scientists from NASA that were like ex fucking Nazis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys will forget about the Holocaust. Yeah, don't worry Come about over it. here and build some of those fucking jet engines that you guys know how to build. <laughs> and Miller's like, fuck that. Fuck this guy. Yeah, yeah, he's seen Eros. He's seen the horror. He's seen people fucking dying of radiation poisoning. <laughs> he just fucking shoots him. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting how Holden ends up reacting to that. Right? Mm, mm, mm. Where he fucking... It, it, it's so complicated like the, yeah. the way and you know it would be hard in that situation to 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 be black and white like even holden even though he's got his values and he wants yeah. to purge yeah. the proto molecule mm. it's like, okay well so if we can understand the proto molecule that might help us do something about it yeah yeah build an anti-vaccine or some stuff whatever yeah. right yeah, yeah and so but then but then miller is like well okay well this guy's fucking dangerous yeah yeah and he even remarks miller even remarks later on that he's like oh well i didn't shoot him because he was bad or what he did i shot him because what he was saying was making too much sense yeah yeah he would have gotten like political asylum and then he would have well, well, gotten away with it basically well 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 and, and and that you know oh your intentions might be to do artificial evolution or whatever of the human species but yeah the, the, the path to hell is paved with good intentions right? yeah yeah and so true, true. Well, whatever you're doing ends up becoming something else yeah 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 and then yeah that that interplay between miller and holden is great holden's like what the fuck what is wrong yeah, with what you what the fuck are you doing <laughs> yeah. i don't want to fucking see him on the fucking station yeah yeah yeah, yeah. in the next episode it's fucking yeah yeah because yeah in this episode they have a moment too where miller's like i'll clean out my bunk and holden's like nah you can keep all your stuff it's, it's like the next episode friend. get the fuck out yeah. You fucking psychopath! Well, Amos drops off all his fucking stuff at the bar or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's shaving his head and you're seeing Julie Mao and he's having all these. He's listening to that that terrible music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is the broadcast from yeah. fucking Aero Aero's, Station, yeah, yeah. which is all the people in Cut into This terrible techno. Uh. And then, yeah, he, he dies, Steve. Spoilers. <laughs> but does he? He kind of dies. He kind of comes back. Well, oh, nobody. He, then he dies again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's fucking so good. Oh, fuck. Uh, it just uh, he, he ends up being such a great character too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Miller. Miller's yeah. probably my favorite character. 
I, I always have a soft spot for the old, burnt, jaded... Yeah, <laughs> really <laughs> cynical. <laughs> yeah. cynical. Divorced, cigarette smoking alcoholic. I just, I love that character. Well, everybody, everybody loves bloody uh, Amos. That's everybody's mm. like, that's the going internet's favourite character. And he's such a fucking... Yeah, character. it's hard to not like Amos. Uh, yeah. He's like a big, cuddly teddy bear that fucking murders people at the drop <laughs> of a hat. Yeah. He's incapable of feeling empathy. And has no moral compass. Now, is it empathy... So, I know this sort of goes further on into the season, right? Yeah. They never, and they never go into it, right? It's sort of... We know, we end up knowing that it's fear that he can't feel. Yeah, It yeah, is yeah. of empathy mm. that well, he can't feel. he went through the traumatic experience as a child, and then his reasoning was, I don't want to feel fear anymore. No. And then through getting rid of the fear, that drug, else. yeah. He's unable to evaluate any social situation and... Yeah, see a perspective through anyone's eyes. But then he has like an existential crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently he gets chapters in the book later on, which is interesting. He what? Uh, apparently he gets his own chapters Oh in the cool, book, yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Because well, at the moment it's just Holden, Miller, Holden, Miller. Yeah, Holden, well, Miller. I mean, we, we get more screen time with all our characters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, they're all super complex. Theoretically, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many complex fucking characters do we end up having by season four? Dozens. Yeah, 26. <laughs> <laughs> they're all like super fleshed out, super complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like your, your Game of Thrones thing where they're all like, yeah, working in this grey area, this grey moral area. They're not really good guys or bad guys. It's not like Star Wars. Although I guess Star Wars kind of has a Darth Vader is good kind of thing. But you know, like the first Star Wars is like good versus evil. Yeah, yeah, this is sure. the, the political fucking drama of who is right, who is wrong. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah, the moral, the moral grey grey zone and moral, you know, compass sort of conundrums and stuff. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Which is great. Which is great. That's yeah. that's exactly where you Death. Want. Death. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in conclusion, the expanse is good. <laughs> Duh. Everybody fucking knows that. The entire yeah yeah. Everybody, everybody, everybody knows the expense is good. You're fucking like 10 years too late. <laughs> we, we were late. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember when like season two come out like fucking five years ago. Jasper's like, you should watch The Expanse. I'm like, Jasper, come on. Wait, Steve, Stephen already told me that it was fucking crap. <laughs> he said the accents are uh, immersion breaking. Okay, Jasper, shut up. <laughs> but it, it, what it was, and I thought about it a little bit more, it's it's the way that Holden enunciates his words. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, it's particularly in the beginning until you actually get used to it, or he becomes like a better actor, I guess. Yeah, yeah, the series. yeah. It's, it's uh, he sort of sounds like he's kind of like stumbling on his words. Yeah, yeah, of. yeah. You know, the well, way... We talked about the acting not being like... Game of Thrones or Sopranos. Oh, well, no, that acting. changes anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, you're in a job for fucking five years. Or when has it come out? 2014? Like, when it's six wow. years? Yeah. You're going to become better at it. Oh, yeah, they become... Ideally. They, <laughs> Some people might maybe, not. Maybe. They become phenomenal actors. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the actress that plays Naomi. Oh, but, she's so fucking great. Yeah, she's talked about it in the beginning, though, like, she hadn't had many roles. Yeah. Like, going back to season one and watching herself, she's been like, ooh. ooh yeah, but now she's... Yeah. yeah, yeah. They know the characters, they know the world, they're playing off each other. Yeah. They've been doing the same job for six years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another four years, stick the landing. <laughs> stick Come the on. Landing. We'll see, we'll see. We will see. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys like, subscribe, and comment. Well, the facts are all happiness are null and void. Thank you. Andy. But by watching this episode, you agree to the terms and conditions later here. Shit! <laughs> 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 you always agree inside. <laughs> 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 <laughs>